In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create a cloud using the unite and minus front commands, which you can find in the Pathfinder panel. And as a finishing touch, I'll add an inner glow at the end of the sequence. Let's start by drawing three circles at slightly different sizes. I'll select the ellipse drawing tool from the rectangle tool group. Hold on shift as I draw to constrain the shape to circular proportions and remember to release the mouse button before I release the shift key so that I don't lose the constraining effect of the shift key. My circle has got a white fill and a grey stroke because those are the currently active fill and stroke settings. I'll leave the stroke on at this stage. It will help clarify what happens when I unite the shapes and I'll take it back to none later on. I'll go back to the selection tool and I can resize and reposition my shapes. until I'm happy with them. And that would be fine for this demonstration. It's always a good idea in Illustrator to have some original objects to go back to in case things go wrong and you want to start again. So I'll marquee the three circles with the selection tool, position my cursor inside one of the selected objects, then hold on Alt or Option as I drag to create a drag copy. A drag copy is just about one of the most useful features in Adobe Illustrator and you can use the same technique in InDesign and Photoshop. Excellent. I've got a copy of my three circles and I want another copy as I'm going to show you two variations of this technique. I'll reselect these three circles. The next thing to be aware of, I'm working in CC 2018 with the default Essentials workspace selected. This gives me access to the Properties panel and in the Properties panel towards the bottom are the Pathfinder commands. If you're working in a previous version of Illustrator, you could go up to the Window menu, then choose Pathfinder to show the Pathfinder panel. It's typically grouped with the Transform and Align panels. I'll close that down for now. With the three circles selected, let's focus on the Pathfinder pane. What I want to use first is the Unite command, the first button. I'll zoom in so you can see clearly what happens. Then I'll click the button. You'll see that I end up with a single shape with an outline or stroke that now defines the perimeter of the new shape. Essentially, I've combined the three circles into a single composite shape. Let's do a variation on the second three circles. I'll marquee select them. This time, if I rest my cursor on the Unite command, the tool tip will tell you what I'm about to do. This time, I'll hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and then click. If I click away to deselect, you'll see that I appear to have achieved the same result. But if you go to View Outline, you'll see that by holding down Alt or Option before I click the Unite button, I've retained the original shapes. When I go back to Normal View, I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control Y or Command Y on a Mac you'll see that I've got a compound path with the stroke going around the outside, just like in the first example. There's an advantage to working with this compound path idea, which is this. If I select the group selection tool, which is grouped with the direct selection tool, then if I click on one of the individual shapes in the compound path, I can now reposition this individual element in the compound path. I'll just undo that. If I wanted to edit the shape of the individual path, I could use the direct selection tool to manipulate anchor points and direction points. Again, I'll undo that to get back to the original compound path. 
Next, I want to use the minus front command. I'll start by drawing a rectangle overlapping the base of my clouds. And going back to the selection tool, I'll do a quick drag copy of that shape so I can reuse it. Then I'll marquee my first set of clouds and the rectangle. I'll click on the minus front button in the Pathfinder area of the Properties panel to give me the cloud formation I'm looking for. Excellent. Let's move on to the second set of clouds. I'll marquee select using the selection tool. This time I'll hold down Alt or Optional on a Mac then click the minus front button. Visually, the result looks exactly the same, but if I do Control plus Y or Command and Y on a Mac to go into Outline View, you'll see that again, what I've got is the same result visually in normal view, but retaining all of the individual objects that are used to form the compound path, meaning I've got flexibility and I can fine tune and adjust the objects in the compound path until I get exactly the shape I want. So the first technique is great for its simplicity. The second technique gives me greater flexibility and a slightly more complex set of shapes to work with. Okay, one last finishing touch. I'll marquee both sets of clouds, so I only have to do this once and I'll take the stroke back to none. In the Appearance pane of the Properties panel, I'll click the FX button to access the Effects pop-up menu. I'm going to select the Stylize because I want to add an inner glow. I'll switch on the Preview button, click on the color box and choose a darkish gray then change the mode from Screen to Multiply and possibly bring the blur down to 4 or maybe 3 point. And that's it. OK, the dialog box. Once again, visually, the end result is identical, even though each cloud is formed in a slightly different way. Please like the like if you like to like. Or subscribe, that's even better or like the like and subscribe. That's even, even better. Thanks for watching.